So today we're going to look at replacing the brake shoes for the rear of the Smart for Two Coupe. And the wheel's taken off already. And uh, this is the rear brake area. Now this is uh, the jack that we've already got in place and you've seen how to jack a car up before. Uh, you'll need some pointy nose pliers. I've got two different sizes here. You've got a T27 torque screwdriver, an old manky screwdriver, which you don't mind getting damaged, a hammer, You've got a wire brush to get rid of some dust and some grime and brake dust. You've got an extendable power bar. And you've got a 15mm socket to go on the end of the power bar. And you've got your locking wheel nut as well, remover. And a little pot to put all your bits and pieces in as you take them apart. And of course your brake shoes. So here they are. Right, so let's make a start. So there's the T27. Now this is a retaining screw. Uh, I've loosened it off already. And as you can see, I'm not using the actual screwdriver, but it's a T27 screwdriver bit. So you take out that retaining uh, T27 torque screw and just give the brake drum a bit of a tap. And the uh, the handbrake is already in the, rim, in the down position, the, uh, the lowered position. Then just take your old screwdriver and uh, insert it gently into the sides where you get a natural gap between the brake drum, which is what I was tapping, and the back of the, the brake as well. And it should just come off easily. Sometimes you might need to tap it off with a hammer. There you go. That's what the inside of the rear brake drum looks like, and all that bit of dust is brake dust. Set that to one side. So let's have a closer look and we'll go through some bits and pieces of the actual internals of the rear brake drum. Now what we're doing here is having a good look and paying particular attention to where the springs are located and any other components, which I'll go through with you in a little bit. So this is the master cylinder. This is the, uh, both ends here, the pistons that pop out when you apply pressure or the handbrake. These are the springs. So look, make, pay attention where they're actually located. Very important. This job can become frustrating. Now here are some locking pins with retainers, sprung retainers. And then at the bottom, another spring. And then behind these brake shoes is the cable. Now these are the brake shoes, the actual things that when you apply pressure to the brakes and the handbrake, these things rub on the inside of the drum, which you just removed, to slow the vehicle down. Behind the drum is also a uh, is also a handbrake cable, which we will show you in a minute. Here you see me just taking some photographs, so that if I do take it apart and I forget how to do it, I can always go back to it, and it believe me is very useful. So what you do here, these are the uh, the locking retaining pins, and these lock the brake pads in a position. Now they're a bit fiddly, uh, they're not normally um, uh, seized on. You literally, you'll see now when I take one out, it's sort of on a spline or on a, on a shaft, but they've been flattened. If you can see there, look. And what happens is then, the actual flange that it goes onto and my right hand there has got a hole in it now that is only going to allow it in one way so when it's from the back of the drake brake drum and twisted it cannot pop off and then with the spring acting against it it won't pop off see so when you put the spring on it and you can only go on in one certain way you've got to line it up twist it sort of 90 degrees and then it won't come out So just switch over to the other side now. Now we'll do the same thing again. 
it looks more fiddly than it is, but once you've done one, it becomes absolutely essential. So just feel behind the back of the brake and you'll feel the end of the uh, the retaining pin itself. And it's a bit fiddly. There's a, a bit of a, an, an, uh, an arm in the way at the back of the, the brakes, but you just got to have small hands and a bit of patience. And there we go. Pop it in the pot. Good tip that. Never leave things lying around on the drive or in the garage. Nice and easy to find. So here we are at the bottom of the rear brake drum assembly. So as you can see now, the actual brake shoes, that's the thing I'm holding there, they're quite loose and they flap about a bit. So what we're going to try and do now is we're going to try and prise them off. So if you see there, you've got those two bulbous areas I'm uh, prising against. You actually just put, don't be too frightened, you can't do any damage. Just prise against one side and try and lift one of the shoes out. Because once you've got them out, then it becomes much easier to take the springs out. So you literally just wiggle the bottom springs out and they, they will just come out really easily. And they come out from there. So these are the positions of the springs again. Paying attention, remember, you've got your phone. Uh, I don't think there's any excuse not to take lots of photographs. The more photographs you've got, it stops you from panicking then and you can see where you are. Great tip, that. Great, great tip. Okay, so as I say now, what you can do is you can now see that hidden uh, rear handbrake cable, which was behind the left-hand side of the shoe. And now it is literally a case of just wiggling and manipulating it from in front of the actual axle flange. But be particularly careful about these areas here. These areas of rubbers, and they hold in the rear brake pistons. And if you damage those, then you're into a whole world of hurt. Um, they're quite robust. You know, they'll take a little bit of a knocking and a tapping, but be careful. Don't pierce them. Try not to rub against them to pull them off. Now, as you notice, I'm being quite agricultural here with the way that I'm removing the brake shoes um, but they will come you'll see now they will come and you can guarantee one side will be easy and the other side will be different so when you're changing these brake shoes as well um, you always should change both so when you buy the brake shoes they normally come into a kit for both sides see as I said it's a bit a bit finicky but um, there you go so always do both sides now if you have a look you'll see the handbrake cable. Don't we'll come back to that in a minute. You'll see the handbrake cable look dangling down. That's the only thing that's keeping that shoe there. Look, there's a better photo of it. So there's the actual brake cable coming from in the cabin of the vehicle, going through the rear of the brakes, brake discs, and then actually sitting and locating onto the back of the rear brake shoe. And as you can see, it's got its own little locator, but that little spring on there, um, you literally just push that back. You can even do it by hand. You don't necessarily need pliers. Um, I'm using it just to be a bit safer. You literally just pull it back, lift it upwards, and it'll just fall out. Now, this is uh, only the second time I've ever done this. I'm not a mechanic, but as you can see, easy enough. So what I'd like to do now is, is inspect everything and see where I am. And ultimately, I try and rebuild the original brake shoes and the assembly on the floor in front of me so I can then make sure I'm absolutely lining up with what I've got on the photographs. So I get all the pieces together and I'll go through them with you now. So uh, as you can see, here so this is how it sits on the uh, on the actual rear drum assembly and that's the way round that it goes so this big top thing here that is the self-adjusting mechanism so obviously the brake shoes wear and therefore the amount of material on it decreases but there's a little mechanism which expands the shoes out just enough so that when you put your foot on the brake, it doesn't travel a long time before you actually get braking action. So I refer to the um, to the photos that I've got. 
and uh, as I showed you before. This is really, really good then as a point of reference. Now this is for the other side. And it, if I get stuck, if it falls apart and you panic, go, Jesus, what do I do now? It's literally, you can look at it and you can go, ah, there we go. It's not such a not such a difficult thing. Because finding the material online is is okay. But when you've taken a photo, you can take it from lots of different angles and you always know where you are. So coming back to the um, to the left hand side left hand brake shoe now, um, and as you can see, we've got the rear brake adjuster now. That little part came off if you remember. So this is the actual brake adjusting mechanism itself. Um, I'll try and walk you through it. It'll make more sense when you've got one in your hand. Um, the first one came came apart on the other side of the vehicle, and I did have a slight panic. But again, those photographs helped me a lot. So, what you've got here, I'll try to do the best with this little stick I've got to, to in identify it. So, again, this is the wheel. Now, as you're applying pressure to your brakes and the brakes wear down, this little adjusting wheel, which has got, like, um, teeth on it, expands, expands to push it out a little bit further and further. So your handbrake, when you yank it up, it doesn't roll it up to the top and not move the vehicle. Um, this bit here can come apart as you're taking it off, as you saw when I did it and sometimes elements will fall out. So I'm just going to quickly show you how to put it back together. Um, again, it, you may have to watch this section a couple of times to get your head around it, but it will sink in. So they've got a little little locating plate here, and it's got a hole in it, like a little T hole. Might not be able to make it out very clearly. So if we just take this bit out a second, again, don't panic, and I put it on a yellow cloth just so I know where it all is. You can see, if you might just be able to make out that um, this is the locating plate. And then you've got a little arrow in there as well, a little arrow. And that, in conjunction with this mechanism here, which goes up and down, that's what locks the wheel and stops from going back in as you're applying the handbrake. So every time it wears, it goes in a notch, in a notch, in a notch, in a notch, and then pushes the, the rear brake shoe out a bit. So then this literally is just sliding in. So I think it'll give you a good idea now. I'm pretty sure that, not that way. Oop. Here we go. So literally, as it turns, it, it increases the width of the inside of the drum and pushing these uh, brake shoes apart to make up for the wear that it's using. But this little flap on top has popped out on this um, on this side, and I did have a bit of a panic because I thought, oh no, I'm going to have to order a, a new, a new um, spring, a rear shoe brake spring set. But I'm going to show you how to put it back together. Um, just needed uh, a few moments for me to get my head round it and not panic so much. But it literally, it'll, it'll just go back in with a bit of a wiggle. So you'll note this on this actual, let's call it this flappy retaining lid, this bit here. Um, it's got it's got two holes in it and it's got a bit of a lip. There's the there's the there's the actual male side and that goes sits into the two holes. You'll show you'll see it now when I turn it around. Sits into the two holes and you've got a sort of a, a sticky up bit. You'll see it now. One second. Here, look, can you see the sticky up bit, the, the little bit of aluminium that sticks up on its own? I literally just popped that out a little bit with a bit of uh, bit of pressure with my first forefinger, and then I popped in the little uh, locating flap, and it just sits back in. So panic over, don't worry about it. Then this locator goes back in place, like so, because remember the little arrow's got to sit inside it. See, fumbling. And you've got, oops, see it is fiddly. Sometimes I wish I had an extra pair of hands. And it literally just sits in there like that. So what you can do is just pop it in there. It locates in here, the little arrow 
there's a little metal arrow that goes into the actual hole that you have there then. So if uh, any of that bit of the self-adjusting mechanism falls apart as you take it out, do not panic, do not worry. You can refer to this video, but you can also refer to the, the photos you take. I found that very useful. So here is, I rebuilt the original one. Um, as it would have come off, obviously I can't put the handbrake cable on it. Um, it, it was it was quite easy to do in the end, but once you've done one, the other side is a lot easier. So again, pay particular attention. I rebuilt it just to help me with a bit more confidence that when I put it back on the vehicle with the new brake shoes, they all go in exactly the same position. And I think I did the other side, not necessarily in the same order. So it's just like everything else. One, one side might be easy, the other side might be more difficult, or one side might just fall off because it's more worn than the other. It's just one of the little idiosyncrasies of her car mechanics. But again, so just for the record, I'm, I'm not a car mechanic. I've been doing this for donkey's years on my own vehicles and my friends' and family's vehicles. Just self-taught and using information that I pick up. So there's the uh, there's a locating uh, lug there. There's a locating slot. So just pay attention where that goes. And then you just rock it out. Just rock it out. And see, so you'll have a groove on this left hand side as well. So again, you can be quite agricultural with it. You won't do any damage. The string, the springs themselves are quite robust. And I didn't have to buy a, a, a replacement spring kit. There we go, I just pulled it down a bit. So as you notice, I'm laying it out in a certain way. So it'll remind me when I put it back together. So what I'll do now, I'll take exactly the same pattern part and I'll replace it in exactly the same location. It may seem simple, it may seem logical, but if this is the, the first time you're doing it or you're not familiar or not comfortable or confident, um, any little bit of tip, advice, it all helps. As you can see, all I'm doing is taking one away and then having rebuilt it before, I'm just going to rebuild it, but with the new equipment. There we go. I'm just using the, uh, the old camera phone again and the image is taken just to remind me and as you can see this, uh, this self-adjusting mechanism can be a bit of a pain in the backside so as you can see you've got that slot again on the left hand side for this side of the vehicle which is the driver's side vehicle in the UK Just doing everything you did when you removed it in reverse now. So at this point, I got a little confused, and I'll just refer back to the video. To, I've referred back to the photographs. So again, referring back to the photographs, just making sure that the notch that goes onto the, uh, the silver part of the actuator for the handbrake has gone in. Make sure that the um, adjusting mechanism, the, all the components that slide in and out and are all... Uh, quite mobile and fluid when they need to be are all in the right place and again you do really need to be in a calm state of mind um, because 
they do fall out if you get easily frustrated um this may not be the job for you you do need a fair bit of patience and obviously yeah as it's a part of the braking mechanism it's uh it's a very important piece to get right absolutely 100 percent so this end bit here goes against so this notch here goes into that element that part of the right hand side of the uh the brake shoe and then you've got the spring going into that particular location like that good and then you've got this top spring so this one is going to be a little bit trickier so you're not going to stretch it so what you probably end up doing is on the right hand side just arcing the uh, the right hand side up till it fits in location and then just pulling it down yeah and it's in a lot easier than i'm trying to stretch it probably pop off anyway so then while holding these two parts of the uh, the brake shoes together put the bottom spring in and then it might just flap up a little bit but there you go you've got the uh, you've got the brake shoes together in its uh, in its basic form There you go, matches up. And just double check, make sure everything is in exactly the right location. Good. So, uh, <clears throat> here's the uh, the manky, dirty, dusty uh, brake drum rear. Um, so just use your wire brush to give uh, give it a gentle brush. Now remember those rubber seals on the top of that um, hydraulic piston. Uh, be very careful of those. Don't dislodge them. Um, just be very gentle and delicate around them. And then with the rest of it, it's just good practice just to scrape off any uh, any residue. Now it looks like at some point this was replaced because the other side were had a little bit more corrosion on the back plate. This looks quite shiny. I've had this car for about four years now. And um, so it's, it's stood up to the time pretty well, this size. So it's quite a good, decent uh, piece of kit. And again, just give it a little wipe. It's a dry cloth. Um, I would recommend wearing a mask if you're going to do this because there could be asbestos particles as part of the um, the breaking compound that's worn away, which is what the dust is. Now, here are the uh, here's the the remaining side that I haven't done the brake shoes, and they were pattern parts. Um, various motor factors uh, were charging various rates. I found, on average, they were about thirty pounds UK. But I managed to pick these up from a local part factor for. £22.95 including VAT. So quick comparison. Um, so these are the new ones, like for like. And the reason why I'm changing these is on the left hand side, so the passenger side of this UK vehicle, I was reversing off the drive just from jet washing it and the vehicle froze, it stuck. So I had to replace them because they turned out when I took the wheel off, the brake lining on one of the shoes had come off. So there we are, there's the new uh, rear brake drum assembly, the rear. And there's that uh, cable then, so just remember to attach that. Now these bits here, this is really useful. These two knobbly bits here, so if you notice, they're quite offset and they stick out a bit. So you can actually get a screwdriver on there and then lever them back on. So like everything else, this isn't going to be uh, super easy. It's not an exact science. Uh, it's not do one, do two, do three, do four in terms of steps. You have to do it through a method of sucking and see. So again, be very careful of these uh, these master cylinder pistons, these brake cylinder pistons. Um, they're sticking out a bit because they pushed out to push the actual brake shoes against the wall of the drums. And I've had to just tap those back in just to make sure that they uh, accept the new ones because the new ones are brand new. If I didn't tap those back in either side gently, then uh, you wouldn't get the uh, actual shoes back on. So with where I'm, what I'm doing now is again, just edging it in and trying to get up against it. So again, the 
the pistons either side I just gently tap those with a hammer I mean very gently until you saw them go back in place so there you go and just prized it apart and left the bottom spring off so you could get it over that hub and then literally just by holding it you should be able to get the springs on but remember you've got to put on that that um, handbrake the rear handbrake first which is behind the left hand side and remember when we took it off there was that prong that you sit it in when we pulled the spring back so here we go now we're going to get this uh, back in place So here we go, we're just prizing the, uh, remember I said those sticky out bits at the bottom by, the, by those lugs? We're just going to prize it in over the top. Might take a couple of attempts. You can be quite agriculture, as you know, there's no piston behind there, there's no cable behind there. Um, and you'll just find, you'll just, you'll just get it in the right place and they'll just snap in place. There we go. So they'll flap about a bit. <coughs> Excuse me. So we'll do the retaining pins now. Remember the, the sprung retaining pins? Just do the same in reverse. Put them in with your finger. Pop a spring on. And then you've got the retaining flange, so remember. You'll get a you get a visual of this in a minute. It'll only go in in one way. Pop the spring over the top, pop the flange over the top, line the vertical hole in place, and then uh, away you go. So remember, this is where you would have put in the handbrake cable with the spring. So I've missed that out, so I've just gone back to it quickly just to show you. There it is. And again, you can just pull that back, and all I've done is pushed it back with my fingers, and then just use the um, use the, the pointy nose pliers then, just to leave a gap, and it'll just sit in the slot. And then you just prise it back in place. So again, remember, make sure that the top of the brake shoes are sitting on the pistons, the hydraulic pistons, and then just prise it back on like we just did. There you go, so we're putting the retaining springs, retaining pins back in either. And I found uh, often it's best by just using a pair of pointy nose pliers, just holding in that retaining, uh, that retaining cap. So you just feel behind your feel is a hole. It's about there, and that's just a good way of putting it. So you know where the where the hole goes, where the retaining pin goes, and you'll feel the hole and just slide it through. It's a bit finicky, you know. I luckily only got small fingers, but uh, if not, you might need somebody to give you a hand. It's not it's not impossible. It just needs a little bit of patience. So you push it through the uh, the hole in the actual brake shoe. Again, spring on, and then you use the uh, the actual retaining cap and line it up so that it's vertical and just use a pair of pointy nose pliers you might even be able to do it with your fingers but a pair of pointy nose pliers push it in and then rotate it 90 degrees see again this is where patience comes in try again get it over the actual pin itself I feel like I'm fighting Rocky here. Get a pair of point nose pliers and then just wiggle it, turn it, twist it. There we are. Uh, 
and then essentially that is it obviously you've got the bottom uh, the bottom spring left to go on which I may have forgotten to put on and I'll give you another close-up then of this retaining uh, this retaining pin and how it sits and locks in and you can see the the slot and how it fits on the pin but other than that you literally just put on the uh, the brake shoe hub over the top you put the t27 screw back in making sure you line up and there you go done